Greg, were you shocked when you found out who the Ten Commandments killer was? I gave one expression. <laughs> We're back breaking down episode eight of American Horror Story Hotel, and we uh, start off on a cliffhanger that we had last episode. Mm -hmm. uh, little Ren runs into the middle of the street and gets run over by a truck. Mm -hmm. um, very sad open to this episode. Um, and you kind of left like wondering what the hell just happened. Uh, yeah, uh, RIP Ren. And then from there, immediately people show up, they call the police, you hear the sirens coming. Um, and the only person there at the time, of course, is John Lowe. Um, but he's got to, you know, get the hell out of there since he, he hears the sirens and he leaves and no one else, you know, says anything. They just let him go. And that's it. Hey, it's, hey, dude, stop. <laughs> stop running away from the scene. There's a dead girl on the ground and um, uh, you're the only person here who saw anything. OK, he's just going to, you know, hightail out of here. It's all good. And the reason why John is running away from the scene is because he's trying to get some answers, right? He wants to go straight back to the Hotel Cortez and figure out what the hell is actually happening. Mm -hmm. Um, he, you know, he, he, he greets Liz at the front desk, Liz, who's still reeling from Tristan's death, obviously a few episodes ago. Um, and then, uh, you know, he, he's looking for answers from somebody. He need, he needs someone to tell him what the hell is actually happening. Mm -hmm. And Sally's there and Sally's like, okay, I will finally, you're, you're finally ready to hear it. <laughs> you're, you're ready to be, to, to be, to, to know the truth. And he thinks it's a joke when she brings him up to room 64. He thinks this whole thing's about James March again, uh, but she assures him, no, this has to do with you, buddy, and something that happens mm -hmm. around 2.25 a.m. Yeah, you remember when we were noticing that the clocks were doing that weird thing at 2.25 mm -hmm. when John was first into the, uh, you know, checked into the room uh, and falling asleep late at night? Um, clearly, that's when uh, we find out that's when James March died in that uh, very hotel. And, um, you know, he play John plays dumb this entire time, doesn't know what's going on. Uh, we don't know if he's actually like doing that or if he literally does not. From what we, from what he tells us, he doesn't. He doesn't remember anything. Like he has these blackouts and he doesn't remember like what was going on. But you see flashes of kind of like what happened, and it's kind of him coming to gri grips with the reality of what 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 ha he doesn't want to believe is the truth. Um, yeah. But we know that he's had those moments where he's kind of just he has no idea, no recollection of what where he was for hours at a time. Mm -hmm. So Sally kind of brings him to this revelation, and then finally she shows him a secret room uh, in room 64 uh, where some uh, some trophies are hidden. Yes, the Ten Commandment Killers trophies um, started by James March, as we saw somewhere from the 1920s. Um, but as mm -hmm. time would go on, he starts to notice, at least John does, that there's something weird here. Uh, March couldn't go out and do the rest of these killings. At this point, we're finally revealed that it was indeed John Lowe, as we learn in the episode later on how he, he did it. But at this point, we just learned that uh, it was John Lowe the entire time that's been, you know, uh, you know, holding the mantle up to continue these killings. Now, Greg, were you completely surprised by this reveal? Like, did it work for you? You know, you can make the argument, honestly. Look, there are pieces and clues that they've had from the beginning that you can say that, yes, they, they knew from the beginning they wanted John Lowe to be the Ten Commandments killer. But you can also make the, you know, like a call here that they may have come up with the killer if they wanted to, or they could have changed the killer or someone else in this episode, mm -hmm. in this script. Uh, they could have wrote anyone in as the killer if they wanted to. Um, now, with that said, using John Lowe, I thought it was okay. It's pretty cool. I, I think what they did with it afterwards, though, it seems they were trying to heavily, heavily make this, you know, mirror the scenes from uh, Murder House when uh, Violet has her reveal yeah. uh, that she's mm -hmm. a, you know, but I won't, spoiler, I guess. It's, <laughs> I mean, you, you should have seen it by now, but yes. The, yes, you should have seen uh, it. <laughs> there's, it's, it's heavily, heavily inspired by uh, Murder House, especially with the reveal and how uh, John Lowe takes it, even a little bit of like Luke Skywalker in there. Impossible. It can't be. Um, but with that said, you can see like scenes where, you know, Sally's like uh, caressing and holding John Lowe. Uh, very yeah. reminiscent of when Tate's holding Violet in the uh, tub. Totally. Yeah. So it, it seems like they yeah. wanted to like bring that back, bring that experience back in this twist. I don't know if it worked <laughs> at the time the way they wanted it to. But um, yeah, I, I thought it was pretty effective for the most part. Yeah, I think I, I kind of agree with you. I think the reason why it wasn't as effective for me is that 
you know, the character of John Lowe, we don't really feel that much towards him. Like, he's not that interesting or fascinating or... That's the point. They didn't want him to be too great of a guy or too, like, gung-ho the, yeah. you know, the good guy, the hero, and then reveal that, oh, no, he's the killer. So you gotta have this neutral, boring character <laughs> for six, seven episodes. Yeah, I agree. Maybe it was just a little too boring for me. At, the, at this point, I'm like, I don't really care about him, so... Who cares if he's the killer? Like it doesn't really, it doesn't really rock my world at all. Yeah. Like it was, he's kind of just like a meh character in the beginning and to begin with, you know. So mm-hmm. it's like, okay, uh, yeah, no brainer. Yeah, he is the killer. Uh, yeah, he's been kind of just like, you know, like you say, he's been like literally blank staring the entire season. So it's like, okay, you're the killer. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah, this is one of those things or one of those moments where maybe um, I'm not going to tell a show that's like uh, the, the ratings and views that they have. I'm not going to tell them what to do. But maybe if there was another character, just one extra character, they probably should have, you know, pumped up around episode four or five to have, you know, root this character on at the same time while we're, John Lowe mm-hmm. is going through his whole mission of trying to find out who the Ten Commandments killer is. Maybe that would have helped a little bit more. I don't know. The Countess. But as we see later on, the Countess isn't, she's not the, the, the nicest person in the world after what she did to Tristan. So here we are. It's you, John. It's always been you. From there, we head over to the morgue where uh, Ren is still there at the moment and Andy's looking over the body. John's uh, buddy slash uh, partner detective. Um, and this is where the episode's boxed in, where uh, everything from this moment going on is John telling a story to his princess writing uh, to yes. Andy here. Uh, the whole entire event of how he became the Ten Commandments killer. So here we are. Uh, and now we start, I think, way back uh, five years ago. We learned that John actually came to the hotel uh, five years ago prior. So as we see in the flashback, you know, after visiting a crime scene, um, you know, John was kind of uh, the way that he used to deal with these uh, tragic, horrific things that happened. Um, you know, he would drink and uh, he went down to the Hotel Cortez bar. And, and then we see kind of the first time that he come, came across a lot of the personalities and characters that we've seen um, throughout the season right so mm-hmm. um we learned that that his connection to hotel cortez is much runs much deeper than we thought it did um and it gives kind of a little bit of backstory into like how we got to where he is yeah. um and, and what we've seen thus far so you know he he talks to uh you know sally and donovan and and then initially um they bring him upstairs to talk to james march um and he starts a long relationship much longer than we think that we he's ever had with James March, um, and the, and eventually, uh, this is how this is the origin story of uh, the Ten Commandments killer and the kind of the passing of the torch. Yes, um, that we see later in this in the season. Now, some of the big things we learn here is uh, one, uh, who was complicit um, with this whole entire you know setup for the Ten Commandments killer. It was Donovan a little bit. Donovan really just brought you know John Lowe upstairs so he can try to get back the Countess from her dinner date yeah. uh, with mm-hmm. John with March. That was it. Um, now, overall, though, the Countess had a big hand to play um, with oh, yeah. John becoming the Ten Commandments killer because John, he wasn't really gung-ho about this. He wasn't 100 in yet. Um, he wasn't all in until, of course, his son, Holden, is kidnapped or has gone missing, to his knowledge. And this was all set up by the Countess and James March early on. Uh, so this was to trigger him, to get him to, you know, make that switch in his brain to turn him into the Ten Commandments killer, Darth Vader. Um, it yeah. worked, um, but there's a lot of things that, that from this point going on that could have just blown this whole thing up and changed it. But if you got to just look at it just through like this is a this is a horror show. Just just take it with a grain of salt. A lot of things from <laughs> five years to to the moment he's there sitting with Andy at the morgue. There's a lot of uh, question marks, um, but it's you know they made it. Uh, they made it to round three profit, so it's all good. Yeah, one thing that stood out to me was just uh, James Patrick March's immediate infatuation with John Lowe as a subject to spend time around. Mm-hmm. Um, he could kind of sense something in his soul. Palpatine. Um, some, yeah, so, some despair. Yeah, it's he Palpatine. definitely was the Emperor vibes going on there. And he even, remember, he has an agreement with uh, the Countess to spend uh, one night a month to have dinner, to hang out. But he even like gave up that opportunity because yeah. he saw so much potential in John uh, in, in, in John Lowe. Yeah, he, he knew what, 
what he uh, his number one desire was, and that was to continue these Ten Commandment killings. And he couldn't do it as a you know a, a spirit inside the Hotel Cortez. He needed someone to do that for him. So he immediately like scraps all of his other plans, and this becomes priority number one for him. And you can tell some of the earlier conversations that, like you said, John wasn't ready. I mean, he's a cop, and he's a disgruntled cop, and sees a lot of horrific, tragic things happening, mm -hmm. and sees all these murders, and kind of uh, doesn't want to deal with the red tape, like you know, as a police officer, and mm -hmm. kind of all, all the the slow processes and procedures in order to bring people to justice. So you can tell that he kind of the way he's talking is a little bit radical in terms of like you know wanting to you know. Dexter, uh, you know, he wants to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bring justice into his own hands and and, and be, kind of become become some sort of a, a vigilante, uh, so to speak. But um, you know, some of the earlier conversations are very fitting for what happens later on. What I know is that death is the only thing in life that has any meaning. Now we also find out that John and Alex they had a rocky relationship even before Holden was kidnapped. Um, mm -hmm. So we knew something was up. Now, the reason that's in the script is because they're going to have a reveal later on uh, involving, of course, his partner um, to set this up. So they had to show a few scenes of, you know, Alex and John, you know, disgruntled with each other or having you know, issues in their relationship, in their marriage. Um, there's there's like, things are chipping away at it right now, even before Holden uh, went missing. Yeah, initially we had thought that, you know, that the, the, the abduction of Holden was a huge reason, was the main reason, if not the only reason they kind of uh, tore this kind of family apart and the marriage apart. But as we can see early on, like these two, like things were, were, were they had problems and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it was like his focus on work and only work and not being around. I mean, he goes to the Hotel Cortez in this one uh, moment that we saw early on in the flashback and he literally stays there for like two days just talking to James March yeah <laughs> like completely just blitzed out of his mind on absinthe and all this kind of stuff without even like a concern or a worry or a responsibility to check back in with the rest of the family I mean <laughs> what kind of a father or, Yikes. or husband does that <laughs> yeah and and she knows he's not at work because she calls so it, so it's a big mess and then add in Holden's abduction, and now that's the cherry on top for this relationship as it's destroyed at this point. Nail in the coffin. Yep. His voice was like a sliver of silk thread, a thin strand that would wrap around my head before burrowing inside me with his ideas. Now, March and John had regular conversations, and uh, this whole time, uh, even while the Countess and March are working on their plan, uh, John had no idea that March is a ghost. Uh, who knows if that would have helped or, you know, uh, worse in the situation. Uh, uh, but if March probably told him, look, I'm, a, I'm again, like the reveal of Palpatine to Anakin Skywalker. This is who I am. Maybe he would have joined a little sooner. Who knows? And then we see James March um, actually. Well, he does kind of give him a little bit of a peek behind the curtain and he shows him his trophy room. Oh, yeah. Um, I like how this is shot, Greg, because a lot of it's in the dark right mm -hmm. and all you see are like uh you know <laughs> all these different animals on the mantle like mm -hmm. just uh, everything that he's killed and collected over the years and he's not he even says that he's not ready to show john the entire room he kind of has to do it's like baby steps to kind of really not scare him off at this point so, so he decides to just kind of show him a few things but then greg oh look at this shows him <laughs> a human head oh yes my accountant henry Henry was stealing from me to be sure, but he had so much more to pay for. Here's their head on a mantle. Oh, good. He be he, yeah. He betrayed me, so here, here he is on the <laughs> wall. Now, any normal person, you and I, <clears throat> if someone went to our, I'm already not a big like into like any like big game on the walls. Like I'm already kind of like getting a little bit antsy and weirded out by that. But as soon as you see a human on someone's wall, you're like, uh. I have this many questions. Wrong. I have many questions. Yes. And also, I probably would have thought, oh, this is fake. I, I immediately would have been like poking <laughs> it and prodding it and seeing like, oh, this is this is real. That's a prop. This is a, prop. a prop. And then I would have stopped. And then probably, I don't know what would have happened after that. Maybe I pass out. Maybe I... Uh, that's I, when you get out of the building. Yeah, that's that's, I, that's, a, that's, a, that's I, a not a good place to I gotta be. go take a bathroom break. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Now, at this point, John is fed up with the red tape 
Uh, he's, he's tired of waiting uh, for the police force to figure out these crimes and everything that uh, all the politics that's going into it. So he wants to take, you know, the matter into his own hands. He, and he gets a nudge from James March, who shows him, uh, who tells him a story of uh, a guy and his uh, nephew, I believe, who show up at the hotel. Turns out he's a pedophile. So he gives him photos and he just sends John Lowe out the door to take care of the rest. Now John meets up with a guy, and uh, I guess it's for the Academy Award. This is where we see the Academy Award, and uh, the dude pulls it out, and he says, uh, he gives a Maltese Falcon a nod, or he's like, this, this is what dreams are made of. What is it? The uh, stuff that dreams are made of. Was his job? He's like he's an internet. He's an internet writer. He writes movies online. He writes about movies online. He that's that's. Yeah. I, I feel like that's a that's a nudge uh, to ain't it cool news or slash film. I think that they put in that script. But I'm, that's either yeah. here or there, because um, he's a pedophile. And then from there, uh, we don't see it on screen. But John beats the living hell out of him with that Oscar award, and um, and then takes uh, what's left of his brain as his first killing in the ten, as the Ten Commandments killing, and he brings it back to James March. Yeah, and he, he handles this as as you would expect. He, he's kind of sick and distraught over what he just did. Mm -hmm. Can't believe he, he, you know, took justice into his own hands and killed somebody and didn't, you know, go the proper channels to take care of, of you know, bring this person to justice. Um, but it's his first kind of foray into this, um, you know, into being a serial killer. This is like the first step towards the dark path. Um, and he uh, actually mm -hmm. almost, he tries to commit suicide. He, he doesn't, he doesn't, um, he fails to do so, but he is about to commit suicide. Now, Sally McKenna shows up and is kind of watching him do this. Yep. And, you know, she doesn't, she clearly wants to be with him. So she's not stopping him yep. from committing suicide. Nope. If he commits suicide in the she hotel. She knows about the hotel. He, yeah. He's then stuck with her for eternity. Yep. So she's like not fighting back. And it takes um, James March to cut him down um, in order to make sure that he doesn't, uh, you know, kill himself. She, he mm -hmm. wants, obviously, um, you know, him to continue killing. This is the first one. And then we see a little back and forth between James March and Sally McKenna. And James March basically like, don't you like, don't you forget about our agree agreement? You know, if, if you don't keep bringing people into the hotel for my own uh uses or the countess's uses or anyone else in here um then you know you're you're not going to be around much longer anyways we see kind of see like the addiction demon pop in and out here mm -hmm. so clearly the addiction demon might like forever haunt sally unless she continues to bring uh fresh blood so to speak into the the hotel now as we see in the flashbacks uh sally and john had a uh, long-standing relationship with each other um, throughout the years that John was spending at Hotel Cortez. You know, his partner Andy is like, uh, she's been dead forever. Uh, yeah. You know, just conflicting reports of what's going on in his brain. Like, I was with her, what do you mean? I've, 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 I've seen this woman, I've, I've spent time in bed with this woman. Like, we've, we've talked about uh, life with, you know, uh, so he doesn't know what to believe at this point. But uh, uh, a small little Easter egg that I found interesting, when they're watching, Sally and John are watching the TV, um, they're talking about um, this televangelist and kind of just, um, you know, talking trash about him and, and, his, and, and, and about that it's a bunch of BS that he's spewing from his mouth. Mm -hmm. And you see on the, on the little uh, lower third there, it says uh, TCK Ministries. Uh, could that maybe stand for Ten Commandments Killer <laughs> Ministries? Might be a little hint as to what we see, you know, later when John becomes full on Ten Commandments Killer yep. uh, during this episode. Um, but an interesting, uh, basically, formation of this relationship that, um, you know, he was doing secretively while he was still married. And then we find out in the opposite end that Alex's wife was was doing the same thing, her own affair and relationship with his own partner. Oh, Andy. allegedly. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. Christ, how I hate this man. Hypocrite. Pick up the phone. Spewing hate and calling it love. This is also where we find out the rules, I guess, of the hotel. We learn a little bit more uh, from the writer's room, at least, of how the hotel works uh, when it comes to how does John not remember any of this? Apparently, the hotel has, you know, its own rules here. And if you walk out, it will keep something 
it'll take something away from you. Uh, and as what Sally says to John is that it's going to take a part of you away. And it happens to be his memory of all the events that happened at the hotel. So his conversations How convenient. were convenient. Very convenient. Um, yeah. <laughs> again, you could make the killer up in this episode if you wanted it to. But again, it's John Lowe. It's fine. Um, now... Uh, with that going forward, John Lowe continues the killings, as we saw with the televangelist, um, the pedophile, and we find out he also did, he's stapling, he, or he's hammering uh, nails into tongues. It was all him. Uh, every single all one of him. them. And yeah, it was all him. And not only was it all him, um, Sally also instructed Ren, mm -hmm. the little vampire girl, to, follow him. to kind of be, uh, you know, a fly on the wall and make sure that he uh, got into the crime scenes. Obviously, he's a cop, so he has a kind of a special advantage in terms of getting to the crime, you know, committing the murder, mm -hmm. going back to the crime scene, Cleaning it getting up. rid of all the evidence, um, calling up the cops, you know, pretending like he wasn't there, doing all that kind of stuff. So not only does he have a little helper with him the whole time who can who's, you know, extremely powerful vampire and can kind of look out for things. Um, you know, he also was able to just commit these murders and then clean up his, clean up the mess mm -hmm. and get there before anyone else can. So he has an explanation. Every time that Andy says, no, dude, like, that's not how it <laughs> happened. You were, you were away. He, ex he has another explanation to like how he pulled off each one of these murders. And he's very like descriptive on how he's doing everything. But still Andy's like, no, 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 this can't be, you're sick. And I, I think part of this is, is his performance when he's telling you know Andy the you know what 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 he's you know all the exposition and telling him the story of what he did mm -hmm. uh shout out to the makeup team that make, makes him look crazy makes John and his eyes just look extremely like I haven't slept in a in a week and I'm just kind of <laughs> completely gone mad yep um he he's nailing uh, you know when John gets that full like uh you know into the you know f becomes full serial killer mode like he nails that evil John look pretty Pretty damn well. Uh, he looks like he's finally, uh, you know, coming to grips with what the monster that he is. Now, one thing, March tells John to make sure that none of the killings happen at the hotel and that they're very mm. dramatic, uh, which they are, as, as we see. Yeah, they, <laughs> they, they very much are. A lot of body horror. I loved it. And this, as we see a montage again of when uh, John's talking to Andy about all of the killings. Um, and now we're at leading back to John and Andy. Uh, John brings up this uh, idea he has the, the affair, uh, this yeah. accusation to Andy that he believes that they had a full on affair. Now we don't, uh, there's no explicit, uh, you know, scenes where we see this, where we can confirm that it happened. But mm -hmm. in, in in the writing in this episode, we're just gonna have to go with it because they just show, you see a full, like one clip of like Andy's hand over uh, <laughs> Alex and yeah. a scene prior maybe where they're together and you think like they're holding hands so maybe maybe they're together they've done they've slept together. Um, it's enough for at least the uh, the production and everyone else to say, all right, stab Andy. Uh, let's kill him off. Let's do one more so we can finally just confirm that he is, you know, John is on the dark side now. He is fully the Ten Commandments killer, and he's going to try to continue his uh, John, or at least March's goal here is to complete these killings. So Andy's the next one up. Uh, Thou shall not commit adultery. And uh, he takes a, a, a special part of Andy, sadly, uh, back to the Hotel Cortez. Admit what you've done and I'll show you some mercy. You don't deserve Alex. This was horrific, Greg. I mean, it all it's all horrific, but I also <laughs> found this extremely comedic. I mean, yeah. if, if someone's explaining to you, uh, you know, I'm the killer. No, 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 you don't get it, man. I'm the killer. I did this, I did this, I did this, like, yeah, I did this, I did... And then you're like, you don't believe me? Okay, well, let me prove it to you again. Stab. I'm going to murder you now. <laughs> he just like stabs Andy, kills him there. Andy's like, you don't deserve Alex. So we're led to believe that maybe he did have something with Alex that, uh, you know. And, and, and then he just takes his his private his privates and puts them on display in the trophy case. Um, next time, just listen to the guy if he's, if he's confessing to all these murders. Mm -hmm. Um, or else he's going to prove it by killing you, and um, he's he's a, he's well aware. I wonder how he was tipped off, you know, that he was having an affair. Probably one of James March's uh, many spies uh, across. One of the vampire um, kids may have told him. Yeah, knows. one of the vampire kids probably for sure. Um, but it was just a kind of obviously a, a horrific and tragic moment for, for Andy and for his private parts, but... Also, I found it just hysterical <laughs> that it came to that, that it had, that he, he didn't believe anything that he was saying. 
Yep. And R.I.P. Andy. Towards the end of this episode, there's a conversation finally that John has with Iris as he returns to the Hotel Cortez. And seemingly everyone in the Hotel Cor- Cortez kind of, you know, knew who John was this whole time. But mm-hmm. they every time they went to tell him, you know, because you talked about the memory that he was losing and, and kind of the blackouts he was having. He never, he never, it never registered. And he's kind of like, he's been halfway, he's been in and out of his own body this whole time. So yeah. finally, we know that John will have no problem kind of uh, realizing, you know, his potential as the serial killer that he is and has been this whole time. So what a relief for all these characters to finally not have to like, you know, uh, step on eggshells around John. They know exactly who John is. He's aware of it now. And there's a kind of like an evolution of the serial killer that he's become. Um, mm-hmm. And we also find out that there's only two more commandments that he needs to um, basically uh, kill uh, and, and, and then yeah. bring him back to the trophy room. He has still has to do thou shalt have no other gods before me and thou shalt not c- commit murder, um, which uh, there's a whole bunch of targets out there. Um, I did get? find it interesting, though, Greg, that the adultery one that he didn't actually kill Alex instead of Andy. Andy's like on the periphery, you know, Alex. Uh, mm. She's been done some horrible things, and I think that John, uh, you know, knowing knowing what what if he f- find if he would find out the the real truth behind a lot of what she did, he might want to target her instead of just Andy, who's kind of on the periphery, like not a huge deal. Like Alex uh, might deserve some sort of justice at, at some point. Uh, I think so. I, I think he 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 knows that he's got something else planned for her. Okay, everyone, let us know what you thought of the Ten Commandments killer reveal uh, in the comments down below and what you thought of it at the time, too, if you watched it live and what you thought of the, that reveal. Um, and from there, we'll be back here next week with Episode 9. See you guys soon. Be safe. Later, guys. Bye-bye.